So how many people here uh, actually own a software-defined radio, SDR? Oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> well, okay. So um, we'll, I'll depend upon <clears throat> some of you to help me out when I get totally lost here. Uh, let's see. Oh my God. There we go. Look at that. So, this is not going to be about how SDRs actually function and work. Uh, we'll have a real expert talk about it at a future meeting, perhaps. But what I'm going to try to do is <clears throat> kind of show you how these things work at your home so you can try them out before you jump into the deep end of the swimming pool. So that, that's the plan. I like to really, you know, try a pair of pants before I buy them, just to make sure I like them and they fit and, you know, my spousal unit approves and other important things like that. So this is, the goal here is to let you have some tools where you can try these things out <clears throat> to see if you want to get involved with these newfangled gadgets or whether just you really like to turn knobs and flip switches or someplace in between. Some of you probably know I became interested in radio at a very early age. <laughs> uh, so I'll talk a little bit about me before we get going. Um, this was the first radio I actually remember. It was uh, like a table at the end of the couch in a big wooden case type of thing. And uh, I remember it had uh, push buttons on it. And it was actually a Crosley car radio that they stuck in this furniture. <clears throat> and it had some sort of uh, tuning slugs here that you kind of wandered up and down in ferrite core to get the station. And this was in the early 40s during the war. And I remember laying in front of this radio during the practice blackouts. And I'd listen to the Lone Ranger and the Whistler and the Fat Man and all that stuff. So this, this was my first radio adventure. The first radio I actually owned, I got from uh, <coughs> Johnson Smith uh, novelty catalog. I'm sure some of you had those when you were kids. It was a real gallon of crystal, gallon of crystal, cat whisker, got a pair of earphones, and it actually worked. And then I went big time, and I put in an antenna tuning coil and a variable condenser. We had, didn't have capacitors back then. We had variable condensers. <laughs> and a uh, little bit of selectivity, and I could listen to WBZ Boston and whoa, 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 West Virginia, and it was really uh, interesting. Then when I was about 12 or 13, I bought a uh, Heath kit, a uh, four-band shortwave receiver, built it. It actually worked. A friend of my dad's had a uh, grid dip oscillator to help tune it. And uh, I built a Q multiplier for it, and it had a BFO, so I could actually find out what uh, sideband and CW was. So all these old radios had a lot in common, basically some sort of uh, filtering between the antenna and then some sort of mixer and VFO or detectors and filters and amplifiers and things. Well, software-defined radios still have to have a, <clears throat> a radio frequency front end, and then it goes into an analog to digital conversion system where it changes all the electrons and volts into numbers. And then it goes into these magic uh, big fat chips that <coughs> throw all the numbers around, and then it connects to your computer, and then you have some sort of software in your computer to control all the magic things that happen in here. So what we're going to talk about tonight is <coughs> hooking up your computer here by the internet <coughs> to hook up to some radio in Russia or Philippines or, or whatever. 
So I'm just going to talk a little bit about the hardware, but not much. Um, they first started as like a big fat uh, <coughs> memory stick, but it was intended to receive uh, television in Europe. So you'd plug this into your TV or your laptop, plug it into your antenna, and the software is all built into here, and you can just watch television. Well, some hams who are much more clever than I discovered that they could flash a whole new program into here and run it as a <coughs> HF receiver, which they did. So you can get these for like 20 bucks, and there's a whole bunch of different uh, software that's available for these things. Uh, you can pay anything uh, for these. The problem with the, uh, the dongles is being designed for television, they really don't go down into the HF. So you can, you know, maybe get uh, 10 meters or uh, 15 or 17 if you're lucky. And then what other people do is they'll, they'll build in up converters to, uh, to move it from, uh, you know, 80 meters up to 50 or whatever is the, the band of this in all different prices. And if you really hit the jackpot, you can pay, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars for these things. And the computer's all built into the box, and the display's all built into the box, and the software's all built into the box. And I think you've got something, like you've got a flex. Yeah, so these are, uh, these are the Cadillacs and the Ferraris. The software's uh, very readily available. There's cross-platform uh, software that's free. Their uh, SDR Sharp is very uh, popular for Windows and HD SDR. Open source, uh, pretty much free. Some available specifically for Mac, Mac and Linux, and then there's also newer ones for, uh, for Android. So you can actually take your antenna, plug it into one of these dongles that's been, uh, had a brain transplant, and then plug it into your tablet or your phone and just listen to a radio on the other side of the world with it. It's, it's unbelievable. So I'm going to show about four different um, examples of the interfaces that you might see. <clears throat> this one is the SDR Sharp. It's very popular. This is a commercial FM band, and this is uh, basically signal strength is and frequency, so this is a spectrum display. And then down here is what's called a waterfall, so it's, it's this spectrum display as a function of time. So you can see here is very strong, and then weaker over here. And this is probably a side channel thing that controls uh, the stereo or the clock or, or other things. And then this is a expansion of the spectrum, and then this is the audio display over here, and then a bunch of buttons and controls here. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Two slides back, you, you put the uh, picture up of the uh, dongle, and you said you plug that into your Android phone, and you can listen to something on the other side of the world. Uh, but that's antenna in coming into the dongle, correct, or not? Yes. That's antenna. Yeah. So listening to something on the other side of the world means I'm getting it. But no, uh, actually, um, right, right. Uh, this one is self-contained, and you that operates in the antenna. So I'm picking up from the air right, across right, the internet. Right, right, right. Correct. Okay. okay. Correct. Thanks. Yep. Good point. So this is another. Uh, uh, example of the software, and it's very similar, but uh, a lot more bells and whistles. Uh, spectrum display, we've got uh, upper, upper part of 80 meters here. Um, this looks like sideband. This looks like uh, some sort of digital thing here, and a digital thing, maybe, maybe CW, and another digital thing. 
So you can just watch the signals pop up and down here. You can watch the performance as a function of time over here. And then you can pick a specific one to actually listen to the audio, which we'll do shortly. Uh, another type, this is HDSDR. Uh, uh, waterfalls up here, spectrum display is here. You can put in your local oscillator frequency here and where you want to actually tune to. So we are actually tuned to this little section right here. All right, and this is, uh, I guess, 15 meters. So this little section here is expanded down here. So here's the spectrum. And this red line here and here is your <coughs> audio passband. And you can kind of drag these in and out. Um, you can pick the mode AM, FM, upper, lower, sideband, CW, DRM, ECSS, signal meters. You can set a squelch over here <coughs> to cut back the uh, excess noise and a lot of other controls. So you can change the speed of the waterfall. You can change the width of the displays. So all the different programs have very, very similar features. They're just implemented in a different fashion. <coughs> and here's the last one. Uh, this is uh, all 20 meter voice at a glance. So we're actually listening to this peak we've got outlined here. So that looks like digital, that looks like voice. Maybe CW. But this one's nice because it's got basically a list of favorites. So you can uh, set up a list of all your favorite frequencies for the different kinds of modes that you want to do. Bill? Uh, what was the What's this software package? This one? Uh, SDR Audio. Uh, and how about the one just before HDSDR? Uh, I'm not sure what that one was. Uh, yeah, that would So, um, yeah. It's not, a, it's not really a question. One thing that is apparent, if you wanted to go to a place, you said to the guy, you can't talk to him because of the QRM, and all you do is look for the hole, yeah. and then you just go there, you tell him, I found a hole at this location because there are holes there. That right, right. Yeah, problems. there's a, it's just a so lot of really cool things you can do with this if you yes. stop and think about it. Yes. And <clears throat> so this is the, the end of the official thing, so now, I have no idea what's going to happen, but we'll see. So I'm going to try to bring up these radios from wherever and play with them and see what we get. And if the propagation gods are favorable, uh, something will work here. <sighs> so anybody from New York? Sure. Go. Okay. So this this receiver is on Staten Island. The guy's not a amateur radio guy. He's got a uh, 53 foot long NFED antenna, and this is running on a ICOM R75. So you have to uh, some of these you have to you have to uh, set up an account or, or log in. So I did that and you basically just do a little administrative stuff and and then he knows who's using the radio for free. Ten ten wins New York. Huh, how about that? So this um let me turn. So you you can control you can control the volume on these directly, and I'll just turn it down so we can hear. But this this is kind of a, a hybrid system. So what you're doing is using a conventional radio with dials and buttons, an R75, but you're controlling it through the interface 
to the internet through this software. So what you can do is you can pick a step size and you can go up or down uh, one channel. You can grab the dial, you can spin the dial. You can pick your modes over here, so you can do AM or sideband or CW. And you can have a narrow, medium, wide filter. So a lot of possibilities. So he's got kind of like a, a login type of thing where you can, uh, it's like a spotting. So, you know, I picked up, uh, okay, let's see, uh, there's WWV. So it's tuning. Maybe put it on CW. So it might be there. Yeah, but it's just, it's just really noisy in AM. So I was trying to get off to the side and just tune a little to get a beat frequency. Yes. So that that's one kind. So this one's got all the hand bands on uh, one page, so you can just kind of take a quick look at it, see what band is active at this, you know, where he's receiving at this particular station. Um, see if I can see where this one is. Oh, I forget. So then you can uh, go to the live radio, and it's kind of like the other one, but different. So it has Okay, so uh, we're on 40 meters. So you see here, you can pick the hand bands, 15 meters, 80, 40. So let's go to, yeah, just butt in here. Whatever you want, whatever you want, we'll see if we can do it. So we're up at the top of uh, 80 here. We're lower side band. So the way you tune this one is with these little sliders. So it's a little hard to tune, but then there's a there's like a a band spread, so you can tune it with this one. sometimes, but not always. We won't mess with that since you're all experts on code. What's that look called? What's the name of that app you got there? This is uh, uh, radiocheck.us. I'll, I'll provide a follow-up email about the announcement here. And I'll have all the links to all this stuff, so when you go home, you can pick all this up. You don't have to take notes. It'll, it'll all be there for you. Where is this located? Um, I don't know. Let's see.
So the other, the other way to tune is um, down here. So we can uh, basically shift the top edge down. So we're 70, 80, 70, 70. OK, so now we're down at the bottom. I'm not very good with this one, so we'll slide. There we go. Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on my horse. We know. We know. We know. Can't pull. Now, was it said you? Uh, well, I think so. Don't know that. George. Yeah. Oh, What's the meaning of the different gifts of some of these signals that you picked up on? Um, Sometimes they're bouncing around within the loop. We'll see. Uh, I can show you that on some of the more advanced software a little bit later. This, this one's pretty crude. After a while, watching the waterfalls, you can tell by looking. You can see, oh, well, that's uh, that's pretty because I can see the two line, you know, or it's uh, PSK or it's Olivia or something, you know, really wide band kind of stuff. And then you can tell, you can see the voice too, and CW. And then this also has uh, two short wave listening bands. So if you want to do some uh, short wave, you can do that. <clears throat> so this is a mobile version. So you can bring this one up on your on your phone or your tablet. It's kind of experimental right now. So you can go in here and you can just type in your frequency. And this one operates a little differently. Let's uh, try 40 meters. I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a, a little yellow uh, cone here. So I'm going to zoom in, and you can see that little. So with this one, what you do is you drag, you drag the waterfall around, and you put the signal in that box. So you can zoom in, you can zoom out. And then you can pick your modes over here. Um, for shortwave listening, it's got uh, synchronous AM, which is really nice when you get a little bit of drifting. It'll stay pretty much locked to the signal. So let's go up. Uh, up a little higher. <coughs> See if we can find. Some sideband. Yeah, so that's uh, somebody trespassing in the handband. So that's AM, but you see how wide that that yellow. Uh, Audio filter is so. If we if we go to uh, CW, it narrows right down. But the interesting thing I think in this one is you can grab the edges of this. No, that's another one. So basically, that it's fixed, and you just. Uh, It's all short wave broadcasters. Mm 
So if there were a contest going on, you could see who was calling, and then you could see, you know, he says, well, five or ten up or whatever. Well, you don't know where he's, where he's listening, so you look, and you can see the other people popping up, and then everybody else stops, and you find the one that he's talking to. So you can see his M.O., and maybe get a little bit quicker on the trigger, you know, next time around kind of thing. Um, S meter, and some of these uh, have recording too. You can just push the button; it'll record what you're listening to. Download it in your download folder, and you go back and listen to it later. So that's uh, 6.30 uh, in D.C., I guess. I just turn that down and try it. Oh, actually. So this one's got a mute, so I'll just mute it. So this is up in D.C., and it goes uh, from VLF, low frequency, mid, high frequency, uh, weather, VHF, all the hand bands, uh, Cushcraft R7 receiver, and some of those dongles, kind of thing. So I'm going to, um, this one's got like zoom all the way in and zoom all the way out, and we can zoom all the way in, and then we can zoom out a little bit. But some of these have these little, um, labels here, this sort of tan thing. And what he's done is identify all these stations. So this one says uh, WSNR, New Jersey, uh, and also, by the way, uh, Radio Cuba, WMAL DC. So if you click one of these boxes, it'll automatically tune to that box. Uh, so. On, a, on different ones, uh, if I like to listen to BBC, I'll just look and I'll pick, you know, channel one, two, three, four on BBC, or they have like uh, soccer games and, you know, things like that. Um, the nice thing about this one, let's see, where are we here? Okay, so we're, we're in AM now, and I'm going to go to AM narrow. You see how that that yellow box gets smaller, and then there's also the option to make it narrower or wider. Or if we go to CW wide, CW narrow, sideband wide, sideband narrow. Um, and so with this one, you can like grab this box and drag it around. And but I also have a wheel on my mouse, so if I just Go in here and I scroll the wheel, I can tune it with the wheel. You can also go over here and, and do some fine frequency adjusting. So say you're uh, say you're on <clears throat> CW and you don't quite exactly like the tone, there's a little tiny button over here and you can just click that and it'll just slide up a tad or slide down a tad or two tads or three tads. So there's a different, lot of different ways you can you can drag it around to tune it. You can do incremental, uh, smaller, larger ones. Um, 
this one, you can actually drop the, grab the edge of the filter and, and you know, cut off the high end or cut off the low end. And that's really useful if you've got <clears throat> like two side bands right together and they're like stepping on each other. Well, you can tune in the one that you want and then you just drag that filter on the other side and just move them out the door. It works really well. So you control, control the speed of the waterfall. Um, I'll show you the notch filter on another one. And this one has recording, so you can, you can record the signal. And, um, and then these are all the different stations that are listening to it. And it's not unusual to have a hundred, couple hundred people listening to the same receiver at the same time. Unbelievable. Was that a four B radio or? Say again. Was that? I, I'm trying to wrap my arms around it. I'm sorry I came late. Uh, that particular one we were just on, for example, when you registered, then you register for that. This one, no. This, this one's free. All you got to do is. Put in your call sign. And <laughs> no. um, you can put in your call sign. You don't have to. Um, but then what it does is, if you're down here. Oh, see right here in the blue, K4THE. So that shows you where where you are on the uh, uh, on the dial, and then these other ones are just the IP numbers of the people who didn't sign in. So it makes it a little easier. So when you uh, okay, so now I'm at uh, I'm at 6:30. So if I go up here to uh, 1800. See, it's moved me up there. So, uh, really nice station, uh, pretty much across the dial. And if he can hear it in DC, you can probably hear it here. This one's interesting. Um, it's a very powerful station. It does, uh, ACE, you know, VHF, HF. Uh, three centimeter band, low frequency, you can hear whistlers and uh, military beacon stations. Um, and he also, he also has some satellite stuff in here. So here's the ISS. So if they're flying over and talking, or the ISS packet, uh, the fun cubes, or listen to the transponders go over. So, really, really interesting station. Yeah, doesn't, this assumes no one else is controlling the receiver, right? No, you have simultaneous. You, right now, there's uh, four, five, oh, six, seven. There's eight people using yeah. this one right now. They could all be on different Yeah, you're you're on the same frequency, you know. You could all be listening to the soccer game on BBC Channel 4 or whatever. Yes, so, but every, everybody has to be in the same bandwidth of his receiver system, right? Right, right. So, so you, um, can't, you can't have people on multiple bands. You all have to be on the same band. Uh, some of these stations have multiple radios and different bands. Okay. So they'll have a dongle on VHF and they'll have a R75 on HF or or whatever. Is there a, a I, mean, I, can, I try, try to wrap my head around this too. Obviously people are writing their own web front ends to this, but are there like open source packages yeah, this, kind of um, jumping on to take advantage of? To? All of these basically use the same uh, sh shared software okay. and they just configured it a little bit differently. So yeah, some have a recorder and some don't. Um, so they have you know, little different uh, different setup. So a lot of them will have uh, user guides or helps or list of stations or you know whatever. So if you find something you like is interesting, you can probably find a how how to on the site. Um, 
This one's in Pennsylvania. Interesting. Uh, does all the hand bands, but also he's got a satellite thing. So he's got different uh, NOAA satellites. This is where the, the weather facts comes down. So this is my favorite one. This is the last one I'm going to go through. This is the mother of all SDRs. <laughs> this is the first one that was on the web back in 08. Um, let me just turn the volume down a little bit here. Uh, but this this is a gigantic, uh, they probably have to cool this thing with Freon or something, I don't know. Uh, but there's a lot of other services available. Uh, what they do, this is uh, in England, or I'm in the Netherlands. So they, they monitor uh, Whisper. And let it come up here a little bit. So you can just look at this quick, and you can see which bands are open and between which points. Because, you know, the Whisper is kind of automatic sort of thing. So you can just say, well, uh, let's see, is anything open to Europe? Uh, well, what do we got? Let's see, the green is uh, 40 meters. OK, let's try 40 meters. Yeah. So I think that's pretty cool. And then you can pick the different, you can p pick all the bands, or you can just pick one band. All the bands, you know, 20 meters, uh, not much there. <coughs> yeah, so uh, 160 is starting to come up. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, this one shows everything that's happened in the last 24 hours from 0 to 30 megahertz. And it takes a while to load, so I'm going to run that in the background, and then I'll come back to that. Uh, but this one, so you just pick in, uh, if you put in your call sign, it'll show up in all the list of users down there. So this is like 0 to 30 megahertz. So you got all the HF in one place. Um, Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got 31 meter band in pink and the 30 meter band in green. <coughs> so the ones in green are the hand bands. So I'm going to click on 30 meters, then I'm going to go over here and click on band, and it opens up 30 meters in the, in the entire width. So we can look there. It's got little, uh, like, favorites here in the, in the brown. So... Sounds like ready. All right. So not much going on in 30 meters. So let's go back and we'll look at the entire band again. It's 40, uh, 60 meters, 80 meters. So there's Netherlands at night, 80 meters. Open up the whole band. Uh, we'll get rid of these uh, labels. So you go down here and you hide the labels and they disappear. See? There was a comment about Chrome just uh, above that that they made so they don't use it. Yeah. Um, Chrome? Yes, yeah, Right. They're, um, <laughs> in, the, in the latest upgrades of in the latest upgrades of Chrome, they've set a flag to not 
automatically play stuff. So if you went on to like YouTube or something, you'd have to click the play button to play it. But that's a pain in the butt for this. So they give you the uh, the magic thing. So you go into your flags and you just flip the the flip the flag from default to uh, no interaction required. So I can show you that. So if I go over here, I do flags. Oh, wrong one. Flags autoplay policy. Okay, so originally it was set for default, and either you turn, go to the radio, and nothing happens. So what you have to do is you have to turn that default up to no user gesture is required. But then you got to relaunch the whole thing, but I already had it set. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in. And then to fine tune it, you can use these little uh, plus or minus buttons for a couple hundred kilohertz tuning. I wanted to show you the uh, the auto notch. There's an auto notch filter. Go on. Back. So if you're listening to sideband and and somebody's tuning up, you can put in the auto notch and it's just finds that and knocks it right out. Or if you get too really close and they're heterodyning, you can knock that heterodyne out. So if you want, you can uh, set up a bunch of favorites and a, a spreadsheet, comma separated variable file. You can import that. Here's all the users on right now. There's a couple hundred people on this one. Uh, chat box, blog book. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, let me find a good station here. All right, so this is the S meter plot of what's in the passband. So, uh, say you had two different antennas and you want to see which one's working best to this location today is you find a clear spot on the waterfall, you know, uh, transmit uh, a C constant tone, CW tone, measure the, the uh, signal strength, flip to the other antenna, take a look at it, flip back, you know, which antenna is working on that path at that time. There's all kinds of tools in here that are only limited by your imagination. It's just incredible. Will it decode RTTY? Say again? Will it decode RTTY? Um, some of them will. And in fact,
Uh, yeah, there's a, a software you can uh, very much like this, and it will decode military signals and BRI and PSK and FTA and all that stuff. So you find something in the waterfall. Follow trumping. Yeah, and it says, oh, well, I know what that is, it's, and, you know, and, and then you got it. So there's two sites where you can find a bunch of radios. We looked at this one before. Um, so there's about 75 of these radios worldwide. The one we looked at before is the one on Staten Island with this type of software. And some of them uh, will uh, require a subscription fee, you know, like 10 bucks a year or whatever you sign up that way. But you can search by country. You can look over here to see the different kinds of radios they're using. So a lot of these are, uh, are ICOM, uh, older ICOM radios, but here's one. This, this is a dongle receiver here, the RTL 2838 SDR. Not sure what that is. But, um, so if you want to try out one of these dongle things, find one here and log on to it and play with it. Um, and another master list that I'll give you Link to is this one, and right now there's a couple hundred of these with 600 people using them right now. And here's here's the one I just showed you, the mother of all SDRs is right at the top of that list. Okay, so you can go in here by uh, and pick a band you're interested in. You can pick a region of the, the world. Um, They'll generally tell you over here the type of antenna they're using or the type of radio they're using, the locations, the call signs, all that sort of stuff. And they're just all over the world. So I'll have all this stuff, all these links in a, in a follow-up for you. This is the, the 24 hour activity from zero to 30 megahertz at that Midland, at that Dutch station. So it starts off at like 20, 20 kilohertz, and down at the bottom, these are all the uh, military kinds of things. Um, this one a little differently. Yeah. Don't ever get old, you can't see my shit. <laughs> okay, so on, on the left side here, is the bottom of the 160 meter band. And uh, up here is uh, midnight uh, GMT. So, like the first the first two inches of this is 160 meter band. So you can see it's pretty dead. Nothing I want to say. Okay. Okay, the 80 meter bands on the left edge. So here's midnight, kind of dies off. Nothing at night. Here's some uh, over the horizon radars or something. I don't know. I can't really tell what those are. Then you can see the activity pick up. So you can uh, you can look at this at the current time and just scroll across there, and it's got the. The, the hand bands and the uh, short wave bands at the bottom so you can see what's active and what's not. And if you look in the upper right hand corner, if you, if you click on the signal, it'll give you the frequency at that particular time. So it's just limited by your imagination. And you don't have to buy anything. It's free. Hams love free things. So give it a try. Uh, if you really like it, you might end up spending $5,000 like some people did to buy a really big black box. Or you might spend 20 bucks on a, on a you know, fat memory stick and uh, check it out. Who knows? But the models are just receivers. Say again? 
The dongles are just receivers, they don't have transmitters. They are only receivers, and all the things I showed you today are receiver only. Right. But there are other websites that have stations operated by hands, and you sign up with them either for free or reserve a time or you pay them by the hour or something, and you can operate the station, you know, a really, really big, powerful station with good Godzilla antennas, you know, for <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to spend a couple ten grand to have a big station. Yeah, but but there, I mean, there people are hunting on that. There are stations yeah, that's true. you can sign up for. The big one up in Maine. Yeah. I know you can so I find it just fascinating. Um, it's a lot different from that crossly radio that I listen to. Tom makes on, I tell you. <laughs> Uh, on your on the dongles, there's one caution to everyone: uh, the antenna connection. If you decide to use one at home to play with, you can put any kind of antenna you want on them, but you don't want to have that antenna touch anything else because it's at a different voltage, okay. and because the front end is a different voltage than anything you have around it, yeah. and you'll blow it up, guaranteed. Yeah. But they don't tell you that except in the fine print. Okay. Good thing to know. So those of you that actually own and operate these things, uh, if you'd like to maybe spend a minute telling your cohorts here what you think about them or your experience, or if I only known, I would have. <laughs> okay, charge you on the field day. Okay.